It's my feel good breakfast show. Our next guest goes by the nickname the general because that's what he was he is a former south african professional footballer and is regarded as undoubtedly one of the greatest ever psl players of the modern era today you guessed it right it's former bafana bafana star and well-known sports commentator and all-round awesome guy Tiko Modise is on the line. Now, being in the spotlight not only means, of course, showing off your talents, but your overall look as well. And something Tiko knows only too well. And today we're going to chat a little bit about his career, his passions, and, of course, his self-care, what that means to him. But first, we're just going to catch up because having a legend like this on the line, oh, man, it's an opportunity that I'm going to jump at. Tiko, how are you, my friend? How's it going, brother? I'm um, good, thanks. And you... I'm good. It's been a minute. Do you miss it? How do you feel now that you've taken this next phase in your career, man? Uh, to be honest with you, I, I don't miss being on the pitch. Um, merely because I think my body is tired. Yeah. Um, I think I've ran my race. Um, but, uh, but honestly, also, I enjoy watching the games now. No, I, I enjoy watching other guys as well coming up. Um, I'm also interested in seeing... Um, who's going to win the league and uh, who's uh, signed um, quality players to beef up their squad. So there's a lot of things that interest me about the game itself. But me seeing myself back in the pitch, it's not something that I actually um, think about at all. When do you kind of feel like the footballing fraternity in South Africa realised that you had arrived and you'd kind of made your mark? I think the biggest break that I got was when I joined Supersport. I think um, that's when actually people started realizing because that's when I joined the national team as well, while I was still at Supersport. Um, going to Orlando Pirates after that, it was just a cherry on top. When now, not only are you just recognized by football fraternity, but also you're recognized by the fans all over the country because we know how Pirates supporters are. Yeah. And I think that's when people started realizing and paying attention to my talents, yeah. How difficult was it then moving across to Sundowns? How, how crazy was making that transition? Look, to be honest with you, that transition was not easy. It's something that I never thought would happen. And uh, when the fans realized that I actually I am moving to Sundowns, um, they started being very upset with me. Um, everywhere I'll go, I'll, I'll be labeled as a traitor and all yeah. the type of stuff. But for me, it was just to get back on track and revive my career. And, 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 and it wasn't easy also joining Mamluri Sundance because it had all the superstars. So I had to come back again and start afresh and reintroduce myself again to the game. And, and I remember that at the time I haven't won anything with the, with the team and I was labeled as a guy that would never win anything with the team. So for me, getting into Mamluri Sundance and, and try and do the best that I can and most importantly, to try and win something with the team, that was very important to me. So it wasn't an easy challenge, but I enjoyed it so much because after that, you know, I started winning trophies and I started enjoying my game again. Are there things that you regret in that sense? Would you have liked to have given it more of a go, been given the opportunity? Is, yeah. that, is that an itch that you, you'd still like to scratch? Sometimes I think about it. I think that's the only thing in my career that I think was... Um, you know, something that didn't sit well with me, knowing that we work so hard as youngsters, we all have our dreams and we want to achieve them. And for me, it was, my dream wasn't far from me and I had an opportunity to achieve that. And once that was denied, you know, I had to come back again and restart again. And it wasn't easy because it played so, so much in my mind. I think I was depressed for like for two years or so. So sure. for me to come back, especially getting an opportunity to Mamre de Sundance to help me up, uh, helped me restart my career. It was a big of a challenge. But for me, I've enjoyed my career. And I think the only thing that's maybe like an itch, like you said, it's, it's that, that part only. Other than that, I've enjoyed my career. No regrets, man. And you really shouldn't have any regrets. As a commentator, yeah. how much do you enjoy now being able to sink your teeth into that side of the game? It's very challenging and it's very interesting as well to see that I do have opportunities to actually give back to the game, but differently where I did uh, the upcon and um, doing upcon is very difficult because now you need to realize and you need to do your research and know all these type of players. And after that, I think they, they enjoyed uh, my analysis and uh, they started talking about it. And I was still playing at the time and I told them, guys, if I do retire, maybe it's something that I'll think about. And they didn't wait for me to retire, actually. They started <laughs> offering me contracts even when I was still playing. And, um, and, and, I, and I started enjoying it because now I started watching games differently 
now, um, I, and, I, and I enjoyed analyzing the players. I, I, I enjoy also uh, getting the inside of the game as well. I think for me, I'm still learning about the game as much as people want me to go and coach. But I think maybe this is my learning curve to try and understand the game more better now, not just as a footballer, but also as a former footballer. We're going to continue our chat with Tego in just a moment. Stick around. We're going to get into how he looks after himself because unfortunately coming with this territory means you're in the public eye and you have to look good all the time. But an absolute pleasure catching up with the general.